One of the reasons I want to just, exp and reason I'm spending time exploring this is because um, you might have heard there's some kind of primic stuff going, you know what I mean? There's kind of war, and, you know, there's stuff going on in the world at the moment, and it happens to be coming, going on at our partic on our watch uh, that we're born into it at this particular time. And uh, whether we might like it or not, there would have been some stuff going on in 2012 of which you're meant to be doing some stuff, whether that's just for yourself for the first time, being really confident or feeling reassured or being able to speak to people or stepping up or doing things or starting things or surviving things to show it can be, show it can be done or actualizing yourself or breaking through. There, there, there is stuff that has, is going on. And uh, I was at the United Nations last year and I've just come back from Iceland when we were looking at this whole thing with the United Nations about how much time we have to sort stuff out. And for a lot of people, it's kind of, oh, God, this is just too horrible. I can't think about it. I think I'm just going to do something else. But we have all been here to try and do something. And so what we're going to do to do something to sort this out, because this is on our watch. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the five energies now, and we're going to try and hold what you might be think you might be stepping up to do and it might just be being an example of being really kind to yourself or it might be being an example of how to bring up kids or it might be an example of step, stepping out and saying no this is wrong I believe this we should be different or it might be an example of how we can get on with each other so there's lots of ways that we can kind of show that we can show up um, I'll just say very quickly um, this next block of year is metal, dominant metal years. So just remember that, that next block is dominant metal years. <coughs> so ready to look at some five energies? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the whole thing about the vitality test is really your ability to understand yourself and others. Now, this is the golden rule. Treat others as though you wish to be treated. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Good idea? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah? Is it not? Is it not a good idea? It certainly is. Because they're different to you. Yeah, I think there's... I, I, I have been you know, doing things that I thought were very kind and considerate to the other person, and they misinterpret it completely, yeah. because that's not the way they do it to me. You know what I mean? So this, yeah, this, this golden rule is in all sorts of biblical books and things and help help treat others the way you want to be treated. Well, why on earth would you do that? Is that not just the st stupid statement out? Because I treat me the way I would like to be treated, and I'll treat you the way that you want to be treated. Because some of the stuff that's gone wrong is we say, oh yeah, well, I, I want to know the truth, so I'm going to tell you the truth. Or I, I, I want to, and it just kind of goes horribly wrong. So we're going against the golden rule here. It's, it's crazy as an idea. So that's what we're going. So what we're going to do is explore how other people want to be treated and how you want to be treated and start to get that language going. So we okay with that? Okay. So every... Then we're going to look at each of the five energies and each energy is, um, is related to a particular season. So water energy. Now remember, we have all these energies in us just at different balances and we often have one or two that are more dominant that kind of show up. Um, now each energy is related to a particular season. Water energy is related to winter. And in winter we have the consequences of our previous actions. If we didn't plant, plant the crops, uh, look after them or harvest them, in winter we're starving. If we didn't, in the winter of our life, if we didn't have a pension, then we have some problems. So in, with water energy, what they're often doing is they're thinking about consequences all the time. Um, now, every energy has a big question that they drive us to ask over and over again. Now, the big question for water energy is, am I safe? Is it safe? So that's their primary question that they're running with all the time. So my lovely wife has lots and lots of water energy. So we arrive at a hotel and she goes, have you seen the fire exit? Do you know where the fire exit is? And I'm going... 
Do you know where the bar is? <laughs> so that's her primary thing. So if I treated her the way I want to be treated, I should be, be down the bar and she'd be worrying where the fire escape was. If she treated me the way she wants to be treated, we'd be looking for the fire escape. So we both look for the fire escape and make sure you've got them. But she is, because it says push the bar to open. <laughs> <laughs> like it. <laughs> so, so when I came up here, she said, oh, drive really safely. I go, yeah, yeah, I will. I've got lots of earth energy, we kind of do stuff about food. So I said, remember to have some lunch? She goes, oh yeah. <laughs> um, uh, like I was saying, water energy is the only energy that leaves its mark on the earth. So people with a lot of water energy, they want to know why. What's the purpose behind this? Why, why are we really doing this? Because it's fun. No, no, but why are we really doing this? Or they might want to leave their mark on the earth. Or as you go through life, your water energy raises very slightly. It's the only energy that kind of goes up a bit. And so as we go through life, we start to ask that question of what's the purpose of my existence? Or we might be at a pausing phase in our life where we're reflective and we ask, what's it all about? Because water energy has this reflective stuff. So the water energy types might be very reflective. So don't ask them to make a quick decision. So Angelina Jolie is a typical someone with typical lots of water energy. They'll often see, they often have very square jaws. So you'll often see female news readers, they'll have these square jaws, because we trust people with a lot of water energy. They kind of, oh, somehow I trust you. <laughs> um, because they have an authority, a purpose, they're asking the question. They're asking whether it's safe or not. So Angelina Jolie has a big thing about sustainability, purpose, what's it about? Because what are the consequences of what we're doing to the planet? She's really into that. Her decision when she found that she had two genes very aggressive towards cancer was a decision to do absolute radical surgery. Other people might have said, a lot of earth energy, they might have said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my diet and I'm going to make sure I do everything I need with my diet to avoid that. Someone else might have said, well, I'm just going to keep really positive thinking because that really helps. Someone else might have said, ah, I can't get me, I'm a rebel. And she made a decision, very calculated, very thin, to have radical surgery to avoid any possibility of the consequences of having these genes. So that people will show up in different ways. Wood energy. If you've got a lot of wood energy, this is related to spring. So we're in spring, and at the beginning of spring, everything is very kind of trapped and stuck, blocked, stuck, held in place. There's this tension. So people with a lot of wood energy have something going on about stuckness and tension. Their big question is, am I free? Are we free? So that's their big concern. And they can be incredibly relaxed and easygoing and flowing and dead relaxed until the point that they're not. So wood is very flexible. So you know someone with a lot of wood energy, oh, they're just so relaxed and they're so easygoing. Oh, it's good. But you don't notice that they're actually bending, and they're bending and bending, and then they snap. <laughs> and when it snaps, it kind of ain't going to go back together again. Mm -hmm. So I've got a lot of wood energy, so I'm very flexible, easy going, to the point I'm not. And then, but the challenge is, no one knows that I'm being very flexible and relaxed and easy going, because I'm so good at it, until I'm not. Um, so if you're a parent, as a parent, or in a work situation or anything where you're so easygoing until the point you snap, is very, very confusing for people. Because how do you ne negotiate that relationship when they're so easygoing and then they suddenly snap? And this idea of freedom, this drive for freedom, people say, oh yeah, we all want freedom, don't we? Some people say, no, I don't, I'm not interested, I want safety. Yeah, no, yeah, you want safety, to be free. No, no, no I want that safety. Um, or someone says, we, we need to be really safe and secure, and no, I, I need the freedom. So we're trying to look what other people, other people need to have. So my wife is very good, she knows there are lots of wood energy, and that freedom to do all sorts of things. But when I was offered to go to Beirut to speak there at a big conference there, I said no. I said no, and I didn't even tell her, so I'm sure she's not listening. <laughs> I didn't even tell her I'd done that, because that isn't fair on her water energy of easy safe. Because as far as she's concerned, Beirut, I, I w won't even get out the airport. Whereas I thought, God, that's really good, I can really do some good stuff there. 
So I said no. So it's respect, boundaries, etc. Um, wood energy. We have good ideas. Really good ideas. So someone said, I've got an idea. Let's make a hat for a dog. Yeah, yeah. I can see it now. And that's kind of what we do. So it's really important if you've got a lot of wood energy to know that not all your ideas are necessarily good ideas, but they might be. And not everyone is going to be really happy with your good ideas. And your ideas may be so big and outlandish you can only ever produce one hat, and once you've done it, you've ordered it, and you want to, you want to move on. So does anyone here have wood energy? Relate to that? So we're not necessarily great at finishing things off. What about the flexibility stuff? Yeah, it's a real problem, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I think it's yeah. amazing. I, I just have a bit of pressure cooker for a few years. Mm. That's what we think of it until we just get to that point. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, where's that come from? Yeah. It's been so fast. Yeah. yeah. And you think that they should know that that's <laughs> yeah. what's going on. Yeah. 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 That that yeah. that ability to and then you feel trapped. You feel trapped. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. Yeah. So that ability to, to sit with discomfort for so long without doing anything about it. So oh yeah, I'm really resilient. Well, is that good or is it bad? So I um, I went to a wedding in France. Before I went to a wedding in France, I'd fallen over. My arm was kind of painful. And after I got back from the wedding in France, which was four days. I looked down at my arm and I thought, it really is painful. And I thought, hmm, I appear to have a bone sticking out. There's a lot of casualty. They go, oh yeah, you had a bone. Now, when did you do that? I said, it was about four days ago. Wasn't it really painful? Yeah. <laughs> really, really painful. But it is that resilient. I'm, I'm going to a wedding. I've decided I've got the flight. Everything's booked. Nothing's going to stop me. <laughs> And that's what we'll do. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a challenge. It's a challenge with that energy. So in this relationship we have with other people and the feeling good about yourself. So when you hold it in as a pressure cooker and then you explode and you say the things you really shouldn't say, how do you feel about yourself? Not great. Or you don't let on or whatever. So it's sometimes just understanding that we kind of hold, we hold stuff on. Um, and with uh, a typical thing with water energy is that they will often, in their quest to save the world and to build a sustainable planet and to do everything, to make a difference, to leave a mark, to have a legacy, they will be blind to their own sustainability and work crazy hours. So is that kind? Is that considerate? Is that, are you going to feel good about yourself when you're just in a constant state of exhaustion, never having completed the big thing? or start having a thousand and one ideas that you don't complete. So we have to control some of this energy, go with it and go without it. And understand that that's some of us are who we are. The energies, by the way, are not an excuse for bad behaviour. <laughs> um, people with a lot of wood energy, they will always, always stand up against injustice. And even to the extent that they will take a big hit for it. And they'll stand up against anybody anything if they believe that injustice has happened or a rule has been broken, a rule that they think is very important. Martin Luther King, very typical wood energy, uh, uh, injustice, he had very clear boundaries, very clear control, we're keeping with this within law, he was actually at the time very innovative and creative in the way that he did different things but very, very controlled and prepared to go up against things even though he was told multiple times, you will be assassinated. He was still prepared to do it for the injustice. Um, fire energy is related to summer, so it's hot, it's expansive. So people with a lot of fire energy will be very, very expansive. Their big question is, am I loved and am I appreciated? So that's, with these big questions, what we're all do, trying to do at time is trying to find the answer to those questions. Uh, so... <laughs> I have quite a, so my three energies are earth, wood. So with my fire energy, I remember I had a, a girlfriend of mine who had a lot of metal energy. They're very analytical and simple, and not simple as in, and like things just not, not to waste, they hate wastage. So I said to her, I love you, that's what we do. 
She goes, yeah, you told me last week. <laughs> I think we're good. <laughs> Whereas you get too far energy people, but it's, it's quite sickening. You get, you get, I love you. No, I love you more. No, I love you. No, no, I really love you. I love you. I love you. Love you, darling. Love you. Love you. <laughs> They're happy. So it's recognizing the challenge with the fire energy is to actually ultimately love yourself. So this whole thing about feeling good about yourself, if you have fire energy, you have a very, 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 very poor memory in terms of remembering what anyone has ever said about you that was nice. It just goes, it just doesn't stick. So you have to look, because you're all the time looking for that answer. So one of the things I classically, I classically do, and we'll do this together, let me do. I've been really nice to you, okay? And you've gone out and you've bought me a card, and you've written some lovely words on it, okay? And then you're going to give this to me. <laughs> <laughs> what I love, it's what I'm, you know, you did all the work. We just go, the equivalent of like that the whole time. And fire energy, people who love fire energy are often the worst for doing that. So they're having to find this answer about my love and appreciate it, and they get a card, and they go, equivalent of like that, because they just go, literally just throw it away. So who does, who's done that? Who's done? Yeah. Yeah, we just, we just go like that. So how do you ever hold on to something that would feel, make you feel good about yourself? And how was that as an experience for you? Well, things suck, you know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So you're not like giving me anything again, are you? No. So we then admit to it. So let's do it again. <laughs> I wouldn't normally do this twice. <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't normally do this. I've got your card. <laughs> experience if you appreciate their thanks and it does make a difference for us so that's the thing for the top tip for anyone with a lot of fire energy is listen to what people say because they are actually saying they love you and they thank you and you're just too busy going on like that um, people that are fire energy they're very hot they're very passionate very expansive they also can burn out <laughs> because they say yes to absolutely everything because in that moment, they're going, oh yes, fantastic, oh yeah. Uh, and they're enthusiastic, they enthuse other people and say, so shall we start this project and shall we do it all together? Oh yeah, 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 let's do this, let's do this. And suddenly all these promises are made and they're committed to it and they're sensitive people. People with fire energy are really, really sensitive and they will try and keep their promise and if they can't keep their promise, they will feel really, really bad about it. And they will often try and burn themselves out trying to fulfill it and do it. Because they've just said yes to absolutely everything. Because in that moment in time, they mean it. It's absolutely true and they mean it. So you have a lot of fire energy. I always say, do not say anything until the end of the week. Just have a list of all the things you were going to, you, you thought about doing and saying yes to. Have a list and then decide at the end of the week whether you're actually going to do it. And do not say yes in the moment. So I have a rule with myself, I do not say yes at the moment. Because I will just say yes. <laughs> and I will burn out to absolutely nth degree. 
Um, people who build a fire energy like to talk. Robin Williams had a lot of fire energy. It's a lot of uh, wood energy with that innovation, that creativity, but it had a lot of fire energy. And that desire to be loved and appreciated in amongst his creativity was actually painful at times to witness. People see that, that pain mm. that he had and that point at which. Uh, and the classic thing, you can have, every energy has a, a lie that they tell. And fire energy, their lie is a hide, hide behind a smile. They hide their pain behind a smile. So be very aware in terms of if you have fire energy, with someone with fire energy, that what you're hearing and what you're seeing may not be the same thing. Earth energy, late summer, these are those lazy, hazy days where everything slows down and we have time to, to pause. And their big question is, do I understand? Am I understood? And they're all the time trying to understand, make sense of things, and that's what this block of time has been about. And if you can't understand and you can't make sense of something, then it's actually really, 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 really stressful. Um, so they have all the time in the world to talk, to have conversations. You often find teachers with that desire to understand and be understood are very uh, typical earth energy. They can be very nurturing, very caring, will often have some stuff going on around food. Princess Diana was a typical someone with earth energy and she wanted to create a family that was nurtured and nourished and understood and part of that thing. That was her desire. Her challenge was that she didn't understand the relationship with the royal family. So when they said, when they were engaged, um, so are you in love? And she went, of course we are. And he went, oh. well, whatever love is. <laughs> <laughs> and she was going, so her issue and her challenge, but the utter brilliance she had, that ability to go into situations and allow people to feel understood and nurtured and looked after, and the first images of her holding, holding hands with people with, with AIDS when it was absolutely unknown as to what it was about, terrifying, she totally changed the world. I was working in HIV at, this, at that time, and she totally changed the world with that, that simple action. Uh, and yet, um, her lack of being able to understand what was really going on was led to, to many problems for her. Meth energy relates to autumn, and in autumn, what we have is a disconnection, we have the end of things. So their big question is, what's missing, what isn't there? That's what they're asking all the time. What's missing, what isn't there? I don't think this is right, I think we haven't quite done this. It's my wife's second energy, it works out really well at home. <laughs> <laughs> but it does, because I, it's fine. Because I know where it's coming from. And she said, oh we haven't done this, this is done, this isn't right, this isn't thing. It's not moaning, it's just her energy is spotting what's what mi what's missing and hasn't been done. She was the younger sister on intensive care unit and she saved thousands and thousands of lives because she was able to walk in there and go, something's blocking the fire door and this drip is missing. That's a gift. However, our challenge, and this can be in terms of feeling good about ourselves, for people if does any people here have, many people here have meth energy? Have we got, yeah? So we've got the numbers and the statistics and the kind of... So if, um, uh, the, yeah, okay. So you can see that kind of tangible pain, can't you, of where are the numbers to, where are the numbers to back up the statistics as to what happened? I really don't understand. Give me the numbers. To, there's no numbers, nothing. It's, it, it's horrific, isn't it? When those energies are, that big question is not able to be answered at a, at a core thing of, Will I survive? Will I live? It's, it's, um, one of the big challenges with meth energy in the world that we live in is that positive thinking and being optimistic is often a dominant thought, frame of mind, isn't it? What we're supposed to do. What we're supposed to do. <laughs> You were meant to keep positive, keep a positive attitude, think about the best in the situation, think about things being fine, because people with a lot of fire energy, that's their way that they function in the world, and they're really good talkers, and they're really good at telling stuff and putting it out in the world, and they're very expansive. So they have sold to us the idea that we should be positive, 
and we should be optimistic. Now it probably is a bit better to be that set side of the But what happens if you have a lot of metal energy? And you go, well, I don't think that, oh God, there you go again, being really negative. <laughs> Bringing us all down. <laughs> Going on with that, pointing out what isn't right. Just when we thought things were fine, you turn up. <laughs> now a joke, but that happens. Has that, with people with methyl energy, has that ever happened? Never. Never. <laughs> has it ever happened? I'm always appreciated. <laughs> and if, if, the, if the, the marker as to whether or not we should be, or we are successful and we're doing the right thing for our society and our world, is based on positive thinking and optimism and visualisation of all the good things that are going to happen, we don't really want these people. <laughs> So at this stage, I'd like you just to leave the room. <laughs> That's equivalent, equivalent to what we get, though, isn't it? So how does someone with this energy feel good about themselves in a world where we're meant to be super positive? And how do the super positive people feel good about themselves when they're actually feeling a bit rubbish? Because they're not really that happy after all, they're just pretending. <laughs> So can you see, so just getting to understand that there's nothing wrong, this is a gift. This is an utter gift to the world, because it tells us what needs to be done and, uh, and what's missing. Uh, constant searching. In ancient China, they always put people in, with a lot of meth energy in charge of the harvest, because they're highly efficient and they get things done. Uh, they absolutely, utterly hate waste, hate it with a vengeance, and they're really good at assessing the value of stuff. Mm -hmm. And they find what's really, really, really precious. And they'll often use numbers and metrics to find and measure it, because numbers are a great way to tell what's there and what isn't there. Okay? So, going back to these. Remember that block of 12 years that we're going to head into? We're heading into a dominant metal energy 12 years. So what do people think that might mean in terms of looking at metal energy? It's hating waste, what's missing, what isn't there, efficiencies, whatever. What do, you, what do people think might be the, the, the zeitgeist of the next 12 years? We might start thinking about the planet. Okay. We might start thinking about the planet. Yeah, we might start to think. And what Earth's there for us to give them yeah. that we don't yeah, we, we might have more efficiency, we might have more waste. The emotion for metal energy is grief and loss. So there might be a sense of we actually finally tap into that we could lose the planet. It's also about assessing what's precious. What is ultimately the most precious thing we have? Apart from donuts, obviously. <laughs> what's the most precious thing we have? our planet. So we're moving into a whole 12 year block where we are going to have some real questions around what's valuable and what's precious, what's important, uh, how can we get the efficiency going, how can we do all that stuff. It's quite interesting on the numerology for the next year, isn't it? 2020, a whole year. Yeah. Practical, logical. Yeah. Very logical, very practical, yeah. And we are going to move into a very more practical, measured, numbered thing. This 12 years have been all about understanding. What you should have done, really get to understand yourself to, to then move into this next 12, next 12 years. The first year, of the, if you look on your sheet, the first year we've got is a metal rat year. And rats, they hoard. They hoard things. So look out for next year. We'll start to see a sense that Oh, perhaps there's not enough. Perhaps we're lacking things. Perhaps we're going to miss things. And there might be a temptation to hoard things. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, yeah that we're getting hints of it already. Yeah. But it, uh, at times it becomes self-sufficient in a way, because this country, at the moment, can't afford it. But yet, we have the capacity to support ourselves. We've sold ourselves down the road. Yeah. Yeah. There's got to be an awareness that people are aware of that um, even if people just screw their own vegetables in their own mm -hmm. back garden, 
Yeah. And it brings things back to Mother Earth, really, yeah. and realising what power she is. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and that kind of sums up where we are at this stage with our yeah. thinking, in order to be okay for that next, that next bit. Um, this, is, this year is a year to get your money sorted, organised, doesn't matter how much you've got, just to have it organised and sorted a bit. Um, uh, because next year we're going to have this meta energy. But don't be frightened of it, because we, what we're going to do, is we're going to really tap in to what we really value and what is truly important. So that next focus for next year, is really, the next 12 years, is what is really important to us now. And this year, these 12 years we've been in it, getting a sense of you and what's important about you. So your importance will be coming into the next year. So this, the next 12 years, what's important about you, what's valuable about you. Um, and we are going to look at, the, look at this big value in numbers. Um, just quickly mention Johnny Depp, Kate Moss, very typical metal energy. Remember I said they absolutely hate waste? So people with a lot of metal energy, you often see models with a lot of metal energy, because they absolutely hate waste. They have very thin, very tight skin. It's not like me, I've got lots of... I'm quite wasteful with my skin. Lots of <laughs> hanging out all over the place. Uh, metal energy, they're very, very tight. They also have a, a, a distance to them, because they're observing and they're sitting, sitting back. So we like our models to be stretched. And Johnny, uh, and Johnny Depp, he has that metal energy. He's always playing a character that is just not quite there and has that slight disconnection from it. So um, they're, they're very, typ very typical. So they're the, they're the big questions. So the important thing to do is to recognise when you, with your uh, vitality test, is am I running any of those questions and what would be the gift within those questions? And what would be the challenge? within those questions, if you've got it. Okay? So what I want you to do is just go into a pair now, with your pair again, and I just want you to look at, it doesn't matter if you don't know your vitality says, you might get a sense of, you know, this is a question I keep asking. So I want you to put down, one person say, say what's the gift and what's the challenge? And if we just do two minutes, do two minutes each. 